viewers, today we find ourselves at Silvertown Congregation as we celebrate the dedication of this renowned congregation. To date, it's 40 years old. It was dedicated on the 4th of November 1978. Come along with me and we're going to speak to some pioneers. On the 4th of November 1978, the then Chief Apostle Streckheisen dedicated the new Silvertown Church building. We spoke to members who have attended Silvertown Congregation over the past 40 years. For me, in my highlight was, I was ordained as a priest that time. They didn't ask you, they just call your name. So I was ordained on my birthday by Apostle Hendricks. And I'm glad to see him today still, and he still looks the same for me after all these years now. I had uh, beautiful memories of Silvertown for the four years um, that I was active in the congregation. Pleasant um, memories, engaging with God's people and God's servants as well, bringing a lot of joy um, in serving and the faithfulness that it adds to you as a person as well. And my most beautiful memory of Silvertown was 54 years ago in the other building of Silvertown, when I married my wife and got my blessing right here. I don't think there's any uh, experience more beautiful than that, and I'm still married to her. In my days as a district leader, which I served approximately 25 years, the last nine years here in Silvertown were the best years of my life. And when I retired in 2009, I was very sad to go because the congregation here, together with the brothers and sisters in the district, brought great joy to my heart. For me, when I was a young girl, I never thought that I was going to sing. In that, in that time, that choir was, a, the name was a special choir. That was the name. And I never thought that I would be part of that when I was still young. But for that service, like you asked me now, um, it was a wonderful experience for me. And also with that, with me, we're being pregnant with my eldest son. And standing there in that choir was for me a phenomenal moment for me with the Chief Apostle. Through the years, many structural changes took place. We spoke to Kevin Johnson, who acted as rector from 2002 to 2007. Um, at that time, we, we went through a phase of, of refurbishment or revamping the church from a normal um, place of worship to a musical auditorium, right? Um, well, it was challenging times. The congregation had to, to move out for a little bit, and the congregation attended um, Q-Town and, and Rylands for a, for a while um, with the first refurbishment, which is the, when we removed the benches and substituted that with the, the nice seating that you see now in Silvertown. Um, and after that, we had another refurbishment, which is the altar and also the organ. Mm -hmm. But at that time, we stayed here, you know, with all the dust and, and everything that happened around us. We, we actually put a, a, a temporary altar in front, and that is how we conducted divine services with a platform. And um, yeah, and that's what we've done. And look at the beautiful auditorium now. Yes, it was challenging for the congregation at that time, um, but now we can see uh, you know, all the, the challenges that we faced and it came out to be a beautiful and wonderful auditorium. Many concerts take place in the beautiful auditorium. We spoke to Apostle Peter Lambert, who has been involved with music for many years. Well, I got to know it before it became known as Silvertown Auditorium, the concert auditorium. It was, I believe, from the beginning, uh, in other words, 40 years ago when it was dedicated, it became the main concert venue. And I was not living in Cape Town at that time yet. I was living in Mossel Bay and I used to observe it from a distance. I used to see, in fact, on the first uh, LP cover, uh, that's a long playing record in case you wonder what an LP is, um, there was a photograph of Silvertown and the choir that did the recording. So 
from the beginning, I know Silvertown as the one where the, the concerts happen, the recordings happen. And then it was almost a natural progression that we would, at a certain point, uh, modify the building. Modify in the sense of improve it to make it more concert friendly, which we then did in stages. That didn't happen overnight, but it happened over a few years. And then, of course, it became synonymous with our public concerts because from the time that it became an auditorium it was no longer just a venue for the members of the church and for music in-house as it were but we took our music to the public and invited the public to the venue here and started collaborating with the Cape Philharmonic Orchestra at the time and over the years yeah with other visiting choirs and orchestras as well so it's, it's helped with the profile of the church in public, but it has also involved so many members uh, in the choirs, in the orchestras, and in fact, generations of members. And again, on a day like today, where you look back um, at 40 years of God's act, uh, work being done, um, you also see that in the music you have generations. You know, parents, grandparents used to sing here, now the grandchildren are singing. So yeah, it's a wonderful, uh, time to look back on. Forty years later, Silvertown Congregation is filled with a rich history and remains a place where many blessings can be experienced. Members shared some of their fond memories. I have many fond memories, very good memories, very deep memories that are entrenched in my soul in Silvertown Congregation. One of my earliest memories that I have, the church before this one, that my father was carried from this church on the day when he was buried and I remember that day very clearly. We had combined um, confirmation classes here in, in, in the old Silvertown with the, with the district elder Aubrey Barnes. That was the father of district elder, district apostle Noel Barnes. He was our district elder and we had confirmation classes here. The district apostle spoke today of the days when we were prepared for confirmation. I remember that fondly we used to come here and to be prepared for confirmation. I remember our youth services that took place. It was very special for us. You know, the building, as we heard, is 40 years old. But the design of Silvertown has always had an appealing um, quality. Um, it's a soft lined building, even for its size. There are not many big buildings that you can say, wow, dating back to when Silvertown was built. I also remember that wonderful time when this church was dedicated. I was here, I was part of the team that helped to build this church. It was exciting times for us. I remember as a young boy, well, I was I was working um, probably a few years and I could steal away from the office and come here whilst they were building and walked around these very, very uh, galleries while the cement was raw. So I really enjoyed the architecture, the building uh, design, and I loved the people, I loved the commitment. I remember the dedication very vividly. I had the good fortune or the misfortune, whichever way you look at it, to conduct a choir at the dedication. That was no easy task. It was the first time we got together in such numbers. All the ministers sang in that choir. It was a male choir and it was a really special occasion. The district apostle indicated during the address in the concert that he sang in the choir for the dedication. Um, well, I was privileged too. And I boast a little bit when I say I was a recording choir member and we joined Silvertown Congregation for the dedication service. So that was memorable. And we can, as the sick apostle said, can't forget the chief apostle Strykhuizen. Sometimes we refer to it as Strykhuizen's Silvertown. I was at the divine service for the departed where chief apostle Strykhuizen officiated what a service, I can still remember it clearly in my soul. The moment when I saw him, it was so special. Is, is this really the man that was on the, our photo in our house all the time? Of course, we waited 13 years for the Chief Apostle Streckhuizen to come because in 1965, we had our first visit of a Chief Apostle when the Chief Apostle Schmidt was here. However, 
It was really wonderful to be part of that celebration and that feast on both the Saturday, it was a Saturday, the ser uh, service for ministers and their wives took place, and then also on the Sunday, the Sunday following was the departed service, and that was uh, the last divine service of the Chief Apostle Strekhaisen. After that, he took ill and passed away, as everybody knows. I was ordained here at Evangelist in 1984. That's also very special. So it's, it's memories that are deeply entrenched in my soul. I eventually become the rector. I was ordained a, a shepherd here in Silvertown, not knowing anything. In those days, you didn't know. And I was invited here to a Wednesday evening service by Bishop van der Hoven. And just because, just before we walk to the altar, he says, you will be the rector here from tonight. And I think it was an overwhelming task. I think there were 40 priests and all these priests were my priests as a child. That it was, it was overwhelming. I thought, what are they doing to me? And I think I was all of 27 years at the time, 27 years old, becoming the rector of Silvertown. But it was great. It was, it was really a special time in my life. And we shared in this congregation. We laughed together. We cried together. And it was just great. It was, it was really beautiful times. I could have stayed here forever. And then after about five years as a bishop, I think it was, I think the district apostle Barnes, the dates, I'm not too sure about that. In 1986, if I remember correctly, um, I was placed into the district apostle ministry. I was ordained as it was at that time by the chief apostle Fair. And together on the altar with me was the apostle, then apostle John Creel. He became apostle then. And Bishop Alistair Creel was ordained as well. And that was special moments also, unforgettable moments. We had a very wonderful leader in the District Apostle Graf for over 11 years and having the responsibility to lead the work after he had led the work was always a challenge and a great task. But the Lord, as today, took over and the Lord led us as he leads us today. And then I came back to Silvertown District as the Apostle now of Silvertown and that was nice and I think I stayed here till the year 2000 when the Apostle Stevens came. I served here as an Apostle um, roughly about five years and that was for me a very very exciting time because uh, Silvertown holds very fond memories for me. I've never worked in the Silvertown area so becoming the Apostle was the very first time I'm exposed and introduced to children of God that made up this very, very famous congregation known as Silvertown. Beyond wonderful memories that I have, who can forget 2010 when the apostles of the world were here for the Pentecost festivities. All the apostles, that was very special for us. The many concerts here, deeply entrenched in my soul and I'm very thankful today that I can be part of this celebration. When apostle, the sick apostle Barnes retired, then I was ordained the district apostle to my shock, I must be honest. But yes, it all happened in Silvertown. So Silvertown just remained something special. On Saturday, the 3rd of November, 2018, members from across the region had the opportunity to revisit the history and special occasions celebrated over the past 40 years. The walls inside the hall were filled with photos and information this setting depicted many historical events and certainly augmented the joy of the occasion. As you all know, we turned 40 this year. Um, that was for the new building of Silvertown. Um, we celebrated on the 3rd of November. Saturday we had an open day where we had an exhibition to show people what happened over the years. Um, Organising this event was quite stressful but it was so much fun getting into contact with old um, ex-leaders and also being able to interview and chat to the seniors of this um, building who's been here for years and even those who moved out. We spoke to some of the rectors of Silvertown Congregation. 
Significant for me, I was one of the first confirmants to be confirmed in this church, 1979, part of a very large group confirmed by District Apostle Good. Then I was ordained and appointed director, so then another journey started for me. So I've got great ties to this congregation. I attended here for many years. The youth, the seniors, and everyone played a very important role in making this congregation beautiful and successful. One Saturday morning, I was about to do a funeral, and the person that I was going to bury was my godfather. And one of the deacons came to the vestry and said, uh, Shepherd, the Apostle Creel is here to do the funeral. So that was just an indication for me that the Lord is always in charge of His work. Coming upstairs and looking at everything, my mind went back to the time when it was still audio. It wasn't visual, it was just audio. And we used to sleep here weekends. The brothers made their beds and they had to look because we couldn't lock the doors. The thick cables went into the trucks. And then of course, the sick elder Barnes that is now deceased, the two of us, we used to go and buy fish and chips for the brothers. We came back eight o'clock, nine o'clock the evening to find out if the brothers still are right. We give them their meal and so on. And they carry on and look and morning, uh, Sunday morning early for the visiting chief apostle being here and uh, visiting apostles. We used to then start again, put things into action and start moving it, etc. But it was exciting those, those times because it was only Silvertown at the time. There was no big churches like Tafelsig and Bishop Leivis and so on. Silvertown was the big church and everything was happening here. So that's what I remember. I started here a good few years ago, before this church was built, when the old church was demolished and we could fortunately help to complete the construction of this church. I'm glad to be here on the 40th anniversary of the church and the Lord has spared me and blessed me and I have very fond memories of many, many things. I've been director of Silvertown Congregation for almost five years and it was a great, blessed congregation and also a blessed experience that I had while I was working here in the congregation. The members from Farnia used to come and various activities that we had, but it was always joyful. The spirit was always about God and His words and how they believed and they cling to His words. And that is always inspirational. I was the rector of Silverton Congregation for the period late 2006 till August 2012. Um, when I came here, I must say I was filled with lots of trepidation, very concerned, I came from Atlan Congregation. However, my, my fears were soon put to bed when I discovered what a beautiful congregation Silverton was. Rich in faith and in history, I experienced many highlights here. I came from the Grassy Park Bishop area. I was the Bishop area administrator for the past three years. When I got the call from the Apostle Lambert, <laughs> he wanted to interview me or inform me that I will become the rector of Silverton. I got the shock of my life. I can you imagine being the rector of Silverton? But he mentioned one word that I uh, kept with me all the time. He said, don't worry, God's people will support and pray for you because they love Jesus. To celebrate the 40th anniversary of the congregation, a music hour was presented by the newly formed Apostle Area Choir and Orchestra on Saturday afternoon. A surprise appearance by the District Apostle added to the blessed and beautiful moments shared in the House of the Lord, with the program also setting the perfect platform for blessed preparation for the service for the departed. Well, I invite you all to sit back and let's enjoy and
On Sunday the 4th of November 2018, District Apostle John Creel conducted the service for the departed. The congregations of Balthorn, Lunga, Lincoln Estate, Athlone, Kewtown and Crawford were also invited to attend this special divine service. As basis for the divine service, the District Apostle read a Bible word from Jude 20 and 21. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Apostle Peter Lambert was called to serve along, after which he and Bishop Neville Baron stood as proxies to receive the sacraments on behalf of the souls and the beyond. What a remarkable two days it's been. Firstly, starting off with an exhibition, then a carol, and ending the Sunday off with five congregations coming together for the district apostle service. One thing is for sure that this renowned congregation serves many purposes and means much to many. We wish Silvertown a happy 40th anniversary.